It was uh, it was just a, it was a fun shoot to do. It worked with great people all around, and uh, Jesse had a great time doing it. But uh, yeah, your head starts spinning after a while because you know you get so you know inundated with information that that you it's it, you just kind of gotta pick the best ones you got right there and go with them. I mean, we had so much more information on each of these subjects that we could put in that we only have an hour you know to, to talk about. So you kind of got to just grab the best things you can and and, and hope for the best. You know. Um, <laughs> I haven't, you know, I haven't talked to your dad in the last three weeks since he left to get down to Mexico. Uh, talking to him or talking to him over email down there. Uh, he was super excited when I talked to him three weeks ago. Uh, is he even more excited now that the ratings have just continued? Oh, of course he's excited. I mean, we're now we're just kind of all waiting to see and then hope we get picked up. And, uh, you know, but yeah, he, he loves the show and is very happy with it. And, you know, and, 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 you know, a lot of, like I say, a lot of love to true TV. They never want you know, really stepped in and said, no, you can't talk about this, or yes, you can. You know, I mean, they, they were very hands-off, you know, I mean, you, you know, and, and they're very good, very good company to work for. Same with Smith Productions, which is the, the production company that put it together. Uh, you know, great people to work for. And like I say, very hands-off, surprisingly. You know, I was expecting, you know, the worst. And you get into, like, you know, media conglomerates and, you know, they're owned by Turner and all that. You know, you never know what you're going to get into, but they were they were fantastic to work with. And uh, really Well, I was involved... I was involved in a big production for Discovery Channel with the uh, director who did Some Kind of Monster, Brothers Keeper, and a, and a lot of other top documentary films, I mean, at the very top of the genre. And he said, I've never seen this in 20-plus years of filmmaking. The whole show was done. Executives came in and said, we're not doing this anti-New World Order stuff. $3.4 million budget killed the entire uh, 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 program. And... I've seen that over and over again where the system does do this. But talking to your dad and other people in the production, they say that his personality, his gravitas, his research, you know, proving it. You know, he, he told True TV, you know, I'm going in to just find the truth. I have an open mind. He found the truth. It's our perspective because we are telling the truth. And it is the first national television show that actually comes from the, from the reality perspective and so how do, how do you think this got on air? Uh, I think it got on air. I mean, uh, I think, A, the, the True TV, you know, believed in Jesse and, and, and you know, had the guts, you know, the, the executives up there had the guts to say, you know, let's take a gamble on this and let's take a chance. I bet there's an audience out there for this, which we found that there is. Uh, and also, I think, you know, it probably got in under the radar a little bit. You know, Jesse hadn't really been in the public eye for a while, and, you know, I think we flipped it by him. <laughs> In terms of the, 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 you know, the media elite and the powers that be, I think we kind of slipped this one by them. But, you know, the great thing about, about Hollywood and television and all of that is as much as they will push an agenda, they still love money. And in TV, it's advertising dollars. So, you know, like we say, the more people that watch the show and more people that want it on the air and want this kind of information out there, you know, you got to write in and tell them to pick us up for the second season. Um, because, you know, they'll follow, they'll follow money before they'll follow. Well, the comes first. <laughs> there is no doubt that if you put this on primetime CBS, ABC, NBC, or Fox, that this would be a number one show. And uh, I know there's been some discussion down the road. I mean, we need to get another season on cable, but this needs to go to primetime television. Now, I don't think the powers that be are going to let that happen. Oh, who knows? I mean, that, that primetime television is so locked into to, you know sitcoms that mean nothing and everything else that, you know, and then, you know, murder investigation stories that aren't true. You know, that's the great thing about being, you know, on, on true TV and working with them is, you know, we deal in, like it says, we do not, you know, we deal in, uh, not reality, but actuality, you know, and it's, uh, it's been a great network to work. This for. is a real I'm Perry true. Mason. I mean, you guys go out and yeah. do a real investigation. Yeah. We're not, you know, we're not CSI out there pretending with, you know, fake dead bodies. These are real issues we're dealing with and real, and, you know, real people we're interviewing. You know, and uh, that's what's so fun about the show is, you know, going into play and meeting, uh, you know, meeting a, a man who, who says he's a Manchurian candidate. You know, I shook his hand. I talked to him. And I, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not, but I can tell you this is that he believes in what he's saying. Well, and, we know those programs killing, are real. You know? yeah. and, and, oh, yeah. and we know he had the car wreck and suddenly remembered all of this. And that's exactly mm -hmm. in the real cases how this has happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, CIA officers like Olson died in these mind control programs. I mean, this is declassified. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, but to get out there and meet those people and, and, and you know, and, 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 you know, I, I just, 
I hope, you know, I can't wait for another season because there's a lot of other stories out there that we weren't able to get this this time around. And, you know, like I say, you know, and get a good get good ratings tonight and everything else, and we'll have a lot of fun next year, you know. Tyrell, give people the address of the different websites that you run in association with the Conspiracy Theory Show, contact info, contact for True TV, uh, some of the places people can interface with you and send you information. Yeah, they can, uh, I mean, you can, you can definitely, uh, send mail to True TV, which is at 600 Third Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Uh, I check on, uh, the, uh, Conspiracy Theory of Jesse Ventura at Facebook.com, you know, go on there and then, you know, post things on there. I definitely read all the, all the, uh, talk back stuff in there. Um, you know, it's, a, uh, go on to the True TV website, uh, right through there and then, you know, just voice your opinion and be heard, you know. Okay, shifting gears. Well, I can't take friend requests from everybody, though. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're on Facebook, and then, then I, my, that's my private page. Don't send me all the friend requests. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's a it's a deluge. Shifting oh, gears. I, um, yeah. I have congressmen on. I have political analysts on every week. I mm-hmm. have uh, top reporters on, people that really understand politics, the political landscape, the Republicans have no credibility. The Democrats have no credibility. No matter who we put into office, governments get bigger. The wars get bigger. Our freedoms get attacked. The banks are looting us. The Democrats and Republicans in all the major polls don't want the government takeover of health care. They found out it's not free health care. No such animal. It's a boondoggle. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, to the insurance companies, even Howard Dean, head of the Democratic Party, is saying that. So people are really angry, and every time I talk to political strategists, they see no one out there with the name recognition uh, or uh, who has the dark horse history and the, and the populist uh, backing to run for president except for Ron Paul and Jesse Ventura. And some people say Ron Paul, almost 75, uh, will be you know, 77 if he got elected and that that's too old. I think he's in great shape, jogs every day, exercises. I don't think that's the case. I love Ron Paul. I support him. I know Governor Ventura uh, is is really waking up, truly, uh, you, know, under, you know, just gets better and better like fine wine as he politically grows. He's a real guy. He keeps his word. He doesn't want special interest. He can't be bought off. The media is demonizing him for that. He was against the war right when it first happened, when many others were for it and then later said they were against it. You know, I mean, he's been right on so many issues. I disagree with him on a few, but, you know, uh, everybody disagrees with, you know, with each other. Nobody agrees 100%. Oh, yeah. I, but, but all these experts, and, and myself included, think that, and, and, and I know he wants to have his own life. He said, Alex, when you get, you know, the age I am, that, that time becomes the most valuable thing. Not money, not fame, not even, you know, he said, I just want to do the right thing. I'm torn between being politically involved with all the nastiness and having to be around all the crooks in Washington. You know, if I do do it, I would purely do it if the people are ready and want a true revolution back to the Constitution. You know, these are the private discussions we've had. We've had some on air. Can you mm-hmm. tell us as much as you can about what your dad's really thinking, what he's doing? He's got to know that he's being looked at to run for president and that he's needed uh Tyrell Ventura you know uh he does know that and he does and, and he does you know hear the hear the people out there I mean there's numerous websites and things uh, you know asking you know Jesse you run in 2012 and, and you know we need you and, and, and that kind of thing and then um you know I, I can tell you this my father's a big believer in fate and if fate opens its door and says you know looks like and puts him in a position where he's going to run for president he, he might, but ultimately, I don't think that's on his mind right now. He's not. He's not shown me anything behind closed doors that said that he has a sight set on the presidency. If anything, he wants to surf more and then continue to work on the television show. Uh, but you know, it's a strange, funny world we live in, and you, and you never know what can happen. But uh, as of right now, no, he's, he, he doesn't have any political ambitions uh, right now, uh, except for just waking people up and, and continue to be a voice of uh, independence and a, and a voice of revolution. Well, that's what he's told me, and people always ask me to run for office, and, and, and the reason I've said I will probably never do it is that I can be pure here. Nobody's telling me what to say. I can do whatever I want. I can tell the truth. I can feel good when I go to bed at night. 
And politics itself is inherently corrupting, inherently is about compromise. And your dad knows he can write books, he can do TV and radio interviews, he can have a hit TV show telling the truth, trailblazing, and that, and that he wants to be from the grassroots part of the revolution against tyranny with the people as a foot soldier, as a commando, as a Navy SEAL. That's, that's what he sees as that front line general out there, you know, uh, on the front lines exactly. in the I, fight. You know what it is, Alex, is that one of the greatest experiences he ever had in his life was teaching uh, political science at Harvard. You know, when they had him come out there for, a, for a, a, a semester at Harvard and was able to teach all these young kids about third-party politics and about, uh, you know, 9-11 and about JFK and things like that. And, and he was able to really, you know, kind of, those are the people that are going to change the world. And I think my dad's kind of getting to a point in his life now where he would rather inspire the person who is going to change the world rather than change the world. He's taken it as, you know, pretty far now and has gone, you know, from governor and everything else. To